Hi guys, my name is Rich Robin. I'm with Gator Pit of Texas Custom Barbecue Pits here in Houston, Texas. I'm gonna walk you through our big boy pellet grill. This is a commercial pellet grill. This big boy pellet grill will hold up to 26 10 pound pork butts, whole butts, up to 26 of them at one time to give you an idea of the capacity of our big boy pellet grill. I don't know of any other pellet grill out there that is this. This is a dual hopper. It has pellet 35 pound stainless steel upgraded dual hoppers on both ends, left and right. We've got a 24 diameter by quarter inch thick, brand new pipe by 60 long, five foot long main chamber with three commercial gator pit gauges on the door, counterweighted with dual birdhouse smokestacks that gator pit's known for. It's kind of our signature stacks on our cookers. See these stacks, you know it's a gator pit. They've got the stainless steel cool touch on them. They rotate. Uh, we've got probe ports on both sides for meat thermometers or other wired devices that you want to put inside your cooker and attach it to your meat or temperature gauges, digital gauges. Uh, we've got dual stainless steel cool touch handles on the front and of course all of our quality construction that we're known for, our fully flanged doors, nice tight seals on our doors, no leaking that we're known for. Um, this one's got a big 14 inch stainless steel front shelf. It's 14 inches deep. It's about 57, uh, 50, yeah, 57 inches long on a 60 inch main chamber. It's got welded corners and we use, actually use stainless steel rivets to attach it. We don't use the aluminum rivets because aluminum rivets will weaken over time and then your shelf will get loose and actually it'll eventually pop off is what's going to happen with aluminum rivets. The stainless steel rivets will minimize that in the long run using your Gator Pit custom cooker. All right? We have a paper towel hanger that this customer added. This is an option to this pit. Another option to this pit is this pit will come standard with our commercial two by eight inch casters. The swivels will have foot brakes on them. This customer opted for our golf cart kit, which is what you see here. This is our golf cart kit. It comes with the custom wheels, the chrome lug nuts, the all-terrain tires, and there's a, a variety of options you can do for tires and wheels. A 20 by 10 by 10 all-terrain tire, as you can see. They're rugged, they're tough, they're beefy. They add a lot to this cooker when it comes to its overall aggressive, beefy uh, uh, appearance. The axles on here, you may be wondering, well, how do they attach these golf cart wheels? We actually make the axles for our cookers, for these, the pellet boys, or any of the golf cart kits. We make the axles, the whole kit, in our shop. This is something that you have to add to your gator pit when you order it or before we build it. We do not have a kit that is a bolt-on kit that we can ship you. If we did, it wouldn't have the quality of this, okay? So I'm saying that, and I don't want to knock other guys out there that have a bolt-on kit they can send you for their cookers, but we don't use washers or shims and nuts and bolts on our products. We, we try to minimize that because we want to keep our gator pit quality we're known for. So the axles uh, uh, are, are fabricated in the house in Gator Pit Shop. Uh, the spindles are a 2K utility trailer spindle. The hubs are a 2K hub. Uh, they're four lug, half inch. And the wheels that you see are gonna be a four lug uh, wheel. Again, everything is heavy and beefy. These, these hubs are tra actual trailer hubs that you would use on a utility trailer to haul your four wheeler or, or any any, anything down the road at highway speeds. That's what your axles and hubs are. There's trailer greased, uh, greased bearings in there packed. Your steering mechanism up front here is also a 2,000 pound hub. This cooker is extremely easy to move around, guys. Look at this. This thing weighs uh, right around 1,200 pounds. All right, and I'm able to move it around. I'm able to steer it which leads me to bump stops. We put bump stops on here so you can't oversteer. Your tires are not gonna hit the pit, okay? Again, it goes back to Gator Pit's quality of construction. This T-handle is removable. There is a pin, you pull that pin out and you can remove that T-handle. I'm leaving it attached for the demonstration purposes, obviously, and I have it kind of suspended up uh, with the cord here 
that you see. So if we want to use it, it's real easy to disconnect and I can take it off if I want. The shelf drops down, there is a drop down shelf. If you lift up on this, you'll have two swing arms under there, two T-handles that are unhinged and that shelf will actually fold down. Again, to open up, some, if you're storing this in a trailer and hauling it or if you, wherever you're putting it, you can, you can try to minimize how big it is by folding it up and taking that handle off. But keep in mind, you got these big old tires on here, so it's still a big pit, even if you fold all that down. Your hoppers, these are the Pillar Pro 35 pound hoppers with the stainless steel upgrades on them. Stainless steel lid and some stainless steel internal parts. Most importantly, that being the or the fire pot rather. The fire pot is a stainless fire pot. Okay, and there's 18 inch auger that runs this way. And on this side, mirror image, so to speak, an 18 auger, 18 inch auger that runs that way. Digital control panel. This is a PID controller. PID controller is what you're gonna want when you're looking at a pellet cooker because it's going to give you and offer you the most consistent cooking temperature that you set it at to run all day long, okay? I've gotten well over 20 hours of burn time off of these hoppers, running 225 degrees cooking temperature, all right? This pit, if you look, you'll see other videos of me firing one up. This pit got the temperature within just, I don't know, seven minutes, and I got it well over 425 degrees if you look at the other videos of me firing one of these up. So I'm not gonna fire this one up because I've done that already. Uh, but I wanted to show you this because it's the first video I've done of one of these with our golf cart kit set up on it. And big door, five foot door, right? 24 inch, five foot door. Upper and lower sliding food trays. And it slides out that easy with the meat on it. Very easy to operate these gator pits with these beefy one inch angle frame food racks. All right, this is a number uh, nine, three quarter inch flat great and it's also reinforced i don't know if you can see but we'll take it out and then i know you will we reinforce it with more angle guys these things are heavy they're beefy they're made to handle putting all that meat on here without worry that your grate is going to in on you there are two 11 gauge heavy duty thick steel 11 gauge grease pans in here that are removable there's a grease pan on this side and there's a grease pan on this side for the hoppers. Below that, each fire pot has its own 11 gauge thick heat shield. Again, internal pans and heat shields are 11 gauge thick steel. They're heavy, quality thick metal inside your big boy pellet grill. And, that, and, for the, and also for the fact of that is all of our pellet grills have the same internal parts like that. So not just this big boy, but our Texas Premier and our Texas Elite. Uh, we've got several models and our Gladiator. All those pellet grills have the same 11 gauge grease pans and 11 gauge heat shields, all that same thick heavy duty quality. All right, so the construction on this bigger, more expensive big boy is the same, or shall I say, the lesser expensive, smaller pellet grills by Gator Pit have the same quality as the bigger, more expensive commercial size. Lower storage area is two inch by angle, uh, two inch by two inch angle with a uh, expanded metal mesh uh, flooring in it or base. And then you have your two inch grease drain. Notice the drain is in the middle. The reason it's in the middle is because the grease pans drain towards the middle from both. All of our gator pit are gonna come with your owner's manual and also a meat thermometer or a meat probe. You get all these with our pellet grills. This is to go in your brisket, your butt, whatever you wanna stick this in to get your meat temp. It plugs into your control panel, run it through your probe port, stick it in your meat, and then you don't have to open up your doors to check your meat temperature when you can simply just push this button right here. It says external probe, and it will display that meat temperature that that probe is in on your controller panel right here. Hit it again, and it goes back to your temperature, cooking temperature that you set it at and that the pit is actually running at. 
okay, which is going to be plus or minus five degrees, give or because that controller is going to fluctuate that temperature. So if you set it at 225, it's going to typically run 220 to 230 overall throughout the cook, maintaining that 225 setting. All right, about five degree increments. Okay, now weather can affect that, but I've got customers up in Montana and in Canada and colder, obviously colder climates, Colorado. Those guys have zero issues cooking on my Gator Pit pellet grills. Zero issues. Research it. Google it. You'll find those guys. Go to my fan page. You'll find those guys posting pictures of them cooking in teens, snow, sub, uh, sub zero temps. All right. These Gator Pits can handle that. Even our offsets can handle that. What else we got on here, guys? Uh, oh, pellet dumps. We have pellet dumps on here. So if you if you haven't exhausted or spent all of your pellets in your hopper, and you're through cooking, and you want to save those pellets and not keep them in your hopper, which I don't recommend doing, there's a pellet dump or shoot. There's your 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 dump. You pull that, and the pellets that are unspent will actually drain into your bag or whatever container you're putting them in. Now you will still have pellets inside your auger and you can feed those out. There is a feed button right here that will charge that auger or, or, or actually empty that auger. Okay, so you can get all the pellets out of your gator pit hoppers by pulling the pellet dump and saving those pellets for your next cook and hitting the feed, bump, feed button and emptying the pellets that are in the auger, that 18 inch auger. Uh, let me show you how these birdhouses work. If y'all hadn't seen my other videos, very cool guys and again a big two inch drain a lot of guys put them little tiny drains on there some of them don't have drains at all but most of, your, most of these pellet, build, uh, uh, pellet grill manufacturers will put little tiny old drains on there a little in, one inch three quarters half inch those things just clog up man they're useless put a big old two inch in there man if you put a drain put a big two inch in there get all the gunk out of there all right don't let it clog up and gel up on you in there on a two inch and the ball valve makes it extremely easy to open and close with a quarter turn of the handle. I'll take the camera and walk you around with it, give you a uh, closer view of it, uh, open the door up, give you a little shot of the inside of it. But uh, again, notice how easy, I mean, this is a big pit, guys. It's a heavy pit. Again, it's, it's, a good, it's easily 1,200 pounds. It's probably more than that with these golf cart wheels because the standard big boy with the two by five inch casters weighs right at 1,100 pounds. These wheels are, I think when FedEx delivered them, they shipped them in a box. Two wheels to a box, and each box was right at 60 pounds. So the wheels are 30 pounds a piece on average. And then you've got the axles and you've got the hubs. If you ever picked up an axle and a hub assembly, they're heavy. All right, they're extremely heavy. So uh, you, you, could, you could be upwards of 1,400 pounds on this. I'm going to know later on because we're fixing to weigh it and schedule it to ship. Uh, it's going to uh, Ohio, customer in Ohio. I'm sorry, Iowa. It's going to Iowa, customer in Iowa. So let me open it up and uh, get y'all some pics real quick or some vids, a little video clip and show you what it looks like on the inside. There's your hopper, a beautiful stainless steel 304 brushed, 304 brushed stainless, all right, with the gator etching in it. Inside here, you might be able to see the grease pans in there. The other hopper, stainless steel top, the T handle, all right, axles, beautiful pit, guys. Get you a back shot, birdhouses. Beautiful pit. Set it back up here. Give y'all my little conclusion. All right, so my website, gatorpit.net, www.gatorpit.net. 
My email is info, info at gatorpit.net. My phone number is 713-896-0144. That contact information is right there on the sign above my head and above the big boy pellet grill. Again, this is on my website at gatorpit.net. You'll see more uh, descriptions and, and features and options on these things. This is obviously commercial size. It's gaining a lot of popularity for catering businesses and also restaurants, okay, because you can set it and forget it and walk away for 20 plus hours. So you can put your briskets on at night if you're on a restaurant or catering business, put your briskets butts on, set it at 225 on the hoppers and go home or go to bed and get up in the morning and everything's gonna be cooked and ready to roll, guys. I know I do it, I've done it, all right? I've got a catering company. There's my catering trailer over there. I'll show you a picture of it. I have a pellet grill in the back of it that I use for my catering. Cooking low and slow, 225, 250 is kind of what I average on these. You'll see my other videos of me cooking. Uh, I've done some videos of me catering. You'll see that on uh, my, my concession trailer. And uh, guys, it's gonna be hard to tell whether or not the food I cook off of this pit, my Gator Pit pellet grills, it's gonna be hard for most people to tell the difference whether or not it came off an offset stick burner or it came off my Gator Pit pellet grill. And that is no bullshit. All right, no bullshit. Go look at my videos of me cooking. Go look at that meat. Go look at me put, cooking them porks, those pork butts, those ribs, those briskets. All right, all the, that meat looks like it came off an offset, okay? All that meat pulled, the pork pulled, all that looks just like it came off an offset. It also has smoke rings in it, natural smoke rings. I don't fake my, my barbecue, all right? I don't fake it, all right? I cook the real deal barbecue uh, using my offsets with real wood and using the pellet grills with wood pellets and the Lumberjack uh, brand is, is primarily what I've been using lately. I've liked it better than the other brands I've tried. I liked it better than Traeger. Uh, and I've used some B&B, uh, &B, uh, although I like B&B, because B&B and those guys are my customers. They, they, buy, they have my grills, the owners. So uh, John and y'all, don't, don't get mad at me at that. I like the Lumberjacks. Um, that's all I got to say, guys. That's it, man. Again, go to my website, give me a call. Got questions? Got any questions? Put them in my response. Don't forget to uh, like my video and don't forget to subscribe to me, my YouTube channel. I've got 320, 340, 350 videos on there. All kinds of stuff that I've done over the years. I've been in business since the early 90s. Uh, I think 27, 28 years I've been in business now. Been doing this a long time, guys. Not new to any of this stuff. Uh, we're not trying to figure nothing out. We're not trial and error. We've been there and done it. We build great quality Gator Pit products. Burners, fryers, gas grills, offset smokers, grills, pellet grills, uh, fryers, you name it. Guys, we do it all right here in Houston. Made in the USA right here in Houston, Texas. And I, I still can't stop looking at it because I just I love this pit. It's beautiful. See ya. Rich Robin. Bye.
Yep. Just talk because I can get it off. Bailey, what are you doing? Come here. All right, here's a bone to watch. Ready? Yeah, it's a little clean, ain't it? Just a little clean. You do have meat gloves, but today I don't have a meat glove for some reason. That's okay. This thing's so tender, we're just going to pull it with some tongs. I don't like to mince it up anyway. Money muscle. Bailey, come here. Come close the door. Close the door. Yeah, I'll just pick the fat out. Whatever the fat's left from what I've trimmed, we're going to pull that out. What you, what you just saw me throw? Alright, guys. Alright, guys. Rich here. Get up into Texas Custom Barbecue Pits. I put these that brisket on, which was about 11, 11 and a half pounds, and I trimmed it down. And I got this butt, which is about eight pounds, and I trimmed it down a little bit. And of course, I cut it in half, obviously, and I uh, laid the two halves in there. It cooks a little faster that way, and I get a little more bark on there. That's the way I like to do it. So it's been nine o'clock since I put these on. It's now 11:38 is the time. Let's see what we got on this temp. 1:58. Sixty-one. And only been on there since nine. Put it at two seventy. That's one seventy. Let me put it at two hundred seventy degrees on the button. That's one sixty-four. One eighty-nine. Wow, guys. Only two and a half. About two and a half hours. That's it. Put it at two hundred seventy degrees on my plug grill. I get a bit. I am about to wrap my brisket, and I'm going to go ahead and put these. Um, Butt halves, I'm gonna put them in a, in a foil pan actually, put some foil on it and capture some juices from it. Um, but again, two hours and 38 minutes to be on the pellet grill here. And I'm at a little over 160 already on the brisket. And you saw, I'm, man, I'm, I'm, I'm wrapped time on these without a doubt, and then some. So I'm gonna go ahead and foil pan these now. Uh, those aren't gonna take much longer to cook and be done. I did cook my cook, uh, put my temperature down, kick it down uh, to 225 on here. I was 270. Uh, I'm going to drop it down to 225 because I'm not in a hurry for these to be done. So I'm going to slow them down a little bit. Uh, I don't have anybody coming over here till about probably five o'clock to eat. And if I keep cooking at 270, they're going to be done here in about probably two more hours. They'd be done, and uh, I don't want to have to hold them that long. So I'd rather slow it down at 225 on here and pull these things off and probably well the, the butt might have to take off because this is cooking really fast but the brisket uh, is going to be going here a little lower and slower and uh that's it guys rich robin gator pit of texas custom barbecue pits this is my texas premier 2. texas premier 2 is a 24 by 36 long 24 diameter about 36 long pellet grill with our Pellet Pro 35 pound hopper, stainless steel upgrades on it. And of course, the nice stainless steel front shelf that drops down, my paper towel hangers, some utensil hangers. In this case, it's holding my apron. And I got the big upgraded uh, eight inch all weather casters and foot brakes. And I got this nice drop down shelf, which I use the hell out of this thing. Uh, as you can see, I'm using it now for my spritz and holding my, my water hose. And uh, it holds my meat pans and everything, anything else I wanna put on there is big. It's 24 deep by about 20 inches out. I got my ball valve grease drain, which I'm fixing to put my grease bucket on there. I just realized I don't have a bucket on it. I'm going to put my grease bucket on it and open it up and let that thing drain out. It's not going to be a whole lot in there anyway. But that is the Gator Pit Pellet Grill, guys. Uh, it is kicking ass. It's extremely easy to cook on. Puts a nice smoke in your, in your meat, which you'll see. I'll try to take pictures or maybe even do a video when I cut that brisket. That brisket will have a smoke ring in it. I always have smoke rings in my brisket. If you look at my previous pellet grill, photos and videos. Um, love it. 
Love it. Again, I put the meat on at 9 o'clock. Had the temp already set it's 270, so the pit was at 270 when I put the meat on. It took about, I don't know, 10, maybe 7 minutes, I think, 8 minutes to get to 270 from a cold start. And haven't haven't done anything. I mean, just been in the house and and uh, I'm fixing to go to the store and uh, I'll be back here in a little bit. And it'll still be going without anybody having to worry about anything. See ya.